Come one, come all. See the amazing Nurgle perform his death-defying stunt. The hoop jump. Bum, 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 bum. Nurgle, you're supposed to jump through the hoop. Well, let's try that again. Bum, 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 bum. Well, we might need to work on that. Well, friends, welcome to the first day of At Home VBS, and thank you for joining us in our backyard circus. Hopefully, you have some quarantine friends with you at your own circus. You know, when you visit the circus, there are a lot of fun and interesting things going on. And we are going to be spending some time this week talking about some of those things. As you might have guessed, Pastor Mary and I love animals. To, so to start this week out, we are going to be talking about some of our favorite stars of the circus, the circus animals. Animals are intelligent and talented creatures that add a lot to any circus. God made all kinds of animals. Some animals have scales, some have feathers, some have wings or lots of legs. Some animals swim in the ocean and some live deep underground. But no matter how different they may be, all of God's creatures make creation a more interesting, more fun place to live. You know, the Bible tells us kind of a lot about animals, too. Sometimes in the Bible, animals are there to teach us something about our God. And other times, our God will tell us a story about animals to teach us something about us and how we are supposed to be as followers of God. We are going to hear about two biblical animals today. First, we'll hear the story of Daniel in the lion's den, one of the stars that God tells about in the story that is in the Bible. We'll hear about how Daniel was a person who put his life on the line for his faith and showed God's power for peace by walking into a dangerous situation. Of course, it's not all danger at the circus. And we know that we have a God who loves all the creatures of creation. So after we hear about Daniel the lion tamer, we are going to hear about how Jesus wants us to think of ourselves as another kind of animal, a sheep. Our wisdom pal Sophie and Minerva are waiting for us inside the tent. So let's head in and see what's in store for us today in God's circus. Come on, friends. Welcome under the tent, friends. We are here with some of our wisdom pals. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Hello, friends. My name's Sophie the Wisdom Dragon. I live in the caves under St. John's Lutheran Church. Ooh, and I'm Minerva the Wisdom Owl. I live up in the rafters at Grace and Peace. Wow, it sure is nice that even though we're all spread out because of the pandemic, we can still come together under God's big tent. You know, one of the stupendous things about our God is that even when we're spread out in different places, we can still be gathered together in love. You know, that reminds me of a song. Do you guys want to sing a song with us? Yeah! All right, great. This is a song called Bind Us Together, and it's one of my favorites, and I'm pretty sure it's one everyone already knows, so we'll jump right in. What? Excuse me, Pastor Nathan, you clown! Uh, yes, Sophie? I don't know this song. Oh, you don't? No. Well, I guess it wasn't good for me to make an assumption like that. You know what, Sophie? I think we might have a video of our friends Andrew and Cherise teaching this song. Do you want to take a look at that? That would be nice. Well, why don't we watch and sing along? Okay. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the song section of the tent. I have some awesome songs for you this whole week. So our first song that we're going to sing today is called Bind Us Together. And I'm going to sing it slowly so we start to learn the lyrics first, and then we'll sing it again. And don't worry if you don't get it the first time, because later in the week we're going to sing this song again. Okay? So the words go this way. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together. 
bind us together with love. There is only one God. There is only one King. There is only one body. And that is why I sing. And we go back to the chorus. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together. Bind us with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together. Bind us together with love. All right, you got it? So let's put it with music, okay? Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, bind us together with love. There is only one God, there is only one King, there is only one body. See you later on in the day for your next song. Bye, everybody. Thank you for teaching us that song, Andrew and Cherise. You know, we'll sing that one again together later on this week. So, we're talking about my nemesis, Daniel, today, huh? Um, your nemesis? Yeah, well, we had a run-in. It's apocryphal. I'd rather not get into it. Well, I, you know, that seems fair. Yeah, we're talking about God's servant Daniel today. You know, Daniel was a prophet that God sent to help out God's people during a very difficult time in their history. Oh no! What was going on? Well, Daniel and his friends had been taken out of their home in Israel, and they were living as prisoners in a place called Babylon. The king in Babylon was a man called Nebuchadnezzar, and he didn't believe in God, and he didn't treat God's people very well. He wanted the people of Israel to forget who they were and to follow his rules instead. But Daniel knew from God that he wasn't supposed to be doing the things that the king was ordering. So he stood up to the mean king, and he said, no. Oh, man! Did he get in trouble? Oh, Sophie, he did. The king got so mad at him that he threw Daniel into a pit where he knew there was a lion. He was hoping that the lion would eat Daniel. This is a scary story. What happened to Daniel? Don't worry. God helped Daniel and made sure that the lion did not hurt him. So, Daniel and the lion waited together in the lion's den until the king came back to see what had happened to Daniel. When he saw that Daniel and the lion were getting along, he was so amazed, he started taking Daniel much more seriously. And then everything was okay? Well, not right away. The king had a hard time learning about God, and he sometimes went back to his bad habits. But God helped Daniel and his friends continue to come to the king and encourage him to follow God and be a better king for his people. So, in that story, God uses Daniel and a lion to try to teach the king about God's power and how to be a better king who can turn away from the mean things he was doing. That is exactly right, Sophie. And Daniel shows us that sometimes it's hard to stand up for what is right 
and sometimes it's hard to change people's hearts. But if God is with us, we can stand up to anything, even a hungry lion. Or a hungry elephant. Well, yeah, I suppose a hungry elephant, but in the story, it's a lion. Yeah, but at VBS, our first game is Hungry Elephant! Oh, okay. Well, in that case, great segue, Sophie. Let's head outside and check it out. This is a game called Hungry Elephant. You'll need a bowl to be the elephant, and you'll need some kind of elephant food. We're using pasta, but you can use whatever you have around that's easy. The goal of this game is to feed it to the elephant one piece at a time. If that seems too easy, there's lots of ways to mix it up and challenge yourself. You could try out a silly walk, for example, or you could try feeding the elephant while hopping on one foot. Another good way to challenge yourself is to take a look in your kitchen for other ways to carry the elephant food. You could try chopsticks, or a spoon, or tongs, or even a big fork. No matter how you end up feeding the elephant, make sure to have fun and be careful. And try not to drop any of the elephant food, or you'll have to start over. If you're at the circus with quarantine buddies, try turning it into a race. When all of the elephant food is gone, the person whose elephant ate the most will be the winner. But in God's big tent, we all win. Have fun, friends. Minerva, what are you doing? Well, when we were outside, I saw all the circus animals, and they were so marvelous. And I was trying to be more like the lion, with the bravery and the big roar. Roar, hoot! Okay, and how's that going? Well, you might be able to tell. I'm kind of having a hard time with the roar. It keeps coming out as a hoot. Roar, hoot. Roar, hoot. Oh, man, I'll never be as good as a lion. Oh, Minerva, don't say that. You know, God made us all different and gave us many different talents. Just because you can't do all the same things that a lion can do doesn't mean you're not as good as a lion or that you matter any less to God. You know, I bet a lion would have a hard time flying as well as you do. Ooh, well, that's probably true. Now that I think about it, I bet there are lots of things that I'm good at that a lion can't do. Well, then it's a good thing God gave us both of you. Amen to that, Pastor Mary. I'm glad we can learn from all of creation. It would be pretty boring if all we talked about was owls. Oh, why's that? They don't give a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right, Minerva. Because God made us all so wonderfully different, we do get to learn from each other. And you know, I liked your idea about trying to sound like a lion. Maybe that's something that we should all try together. Ooh, that sounds like a lot of fun. You know, I was having trouble with the lion. Maybe you better show us how that one is done. Okay, well, whew, let me just see if I can how to, got to get centered and, and find my, my lion, get in touch with my inner lion. Hmm. All right, ready? Okay. Mm -hmm. Roar! Oh. How was that? Oh, that was, that was terrifying. Let me try. Okay. Roar. That one was pretty good. Oh. Thank you. I'm Thank definitely you. getting some growl in there. Let's try it all again. You know, why don't you guys help us out? Will you roar like a lion with us? Let's all give it a try. Ready, Minerva? Roar! <laughs> all right, I think I'm, I'm getting the hang of it. You sound like you are too, Minerva. How do you feel? Well, I thought I did better on that one. Okay. Still a little hooty. Well, that's but okay. Should we try some other of our circus friends? Yeah, who else did you see outside? Well, there were some friendly goats out there. Some goats? Okay, what sounds, what did they do? Well, they were, they said hello to me. It sounded like this, I think. Bah -hoot. Okay. Bah -hoot. That's a goat. Well, bah -hoot. Is, did I say it right? We, I don't know if they were saying the hoot. Oh, now that I think about oh it's it. just, it's just a ba. Okay. Will you guys try bawing with us like a goat? Bah, 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 bah. 
Okay, good. I think we've got that one. What other animals did you see outside, Minerva? Well, there were some elephants. Oh. They were sort of, they were pretty quiet, but they were stomping around. Should we stomp like elephants? Oh, yeah. Stomp, 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 stomp. Are you stomping with elephants like me? Okay, that one was tough. I don't think I'm, I'm quite as powerful as an elephant. Oh, no, me either. I have little stomps. Stomp, stomp. Well... Maybe let's try one more. Who else did you see out there? Well, there were some very beautiful zebras, and they were prancing. It was something like this. Okay, let's try prancing like a zebra. I might not be doing this one very good. That's okay. Well, you try. How about me? Am I doing okay? Oh, that looks much better. Okay. How about you at home? Are you prancing? Prancing like a horse, like a zebra? Yeah. Wow. That was a lot of fun, Minerva. You know... Trying to be like all of those animals reminds me that in the Bible, Jesus often talks about trying to be like sheep. Ooh, yes. Tell me more about Jesus. I love to hear about him. Well, Jesus is our God who showed us how to live. He had lots of important things to teach us, and he lived about 2,000 years ago in the place that today we call Palestine. And there he traveled around with his friends, doing many miraculous things and teaching people about God and showing them how to love each other. He had lots of important things to say, but sometimes people had a hard time understanding him. So he taught them in parables. Ooh, well, what's a parable? Well, a parable is a special kind of story that teaches us something about God. In many of Jesus's parables, he talks about a shepherd and sheep. He says that he is the good shepherd and people who follow him are like his sheep. Oh, oh, excuse me, but I'm an owl, not a sheep. That's right. The sheep is a symbol. But, you know, just because we're humans or owls or dragons, as the case may be, doesn't mean that we can't still try to be like sheep just the way Jesus was telling us. Okay, well, I think I'm starting to understand. So what does this mean for us? Well, it means that Jesus wants us to know that he is going to be like a shepherd and take care of us just like a shepherd takes care of sheep. And that means that he wants us to be safe and to make sure that we're fed and nourished and that we have everything we need. It also means that we should try to follow Jesus just like sheep follow a shepherd. Ooh. What does it mean to follow Jesus? <laughs> that is a great question, Minerva, and we'll be exploring that all week here under God's big tent. But to follow Jesus means that we should try to live the way God teaches us to live. And that means having faith in God and loving the creation that God has made. Well, that sounds pretty straightforward, but it might be a good idea for us to pray for God to help us this week as we learn about it together. I think that's a great idea, Minerva. Would you lead us all in an echo prayer? Well, I would love to. You can all repeat after me. Okay. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you for being our shepherd. Thank you for being our shepherd. Thank you for helping us follow you. Thank you for helping us follow you. Help us love each other like you love us. Help us love each other like you love us. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. You know, Minerva, before we leave behind the subject of sheep, I think our friend Cherise has a fun craft to teach us to do. Should we take a look? Yeah, hooray! Hey, everybody. Welcome. We are going to make a puppet today. So we're gonna make a sheep. Uh, it's really easy. All you need is a brown paper bag or whatever you have, a paper plate, whatever. One white piece of paper, construction paper, notebook, printer, doesn't matter. Cotton balls, just a handful. You'll need glue or tape or something and then scissors. And then I'm using a pink and black crayon, but you can use markers or whatever you have at home. So, to begin, we are going to draw the ears, arms, and the mouth. So, the ears and the mouth are just a leaf shape. So, the ears are going to be the same size. So, two smaller leaves. And then, one bigger one. 
And if you make them too big, it's okay. You can cut them down. And then the arms are just gonna be long, skinny rectangles. Okay. And then you go ahead and cut those out. I already cut mine out. It's okay if you see like the black crayon because you can just flip them around. So that way the crayon's on the back. Not a big deal. And if they seem too big, like when you go to put them on your puppet, just trim them down. So first we're gonna put on the ears. Just a little bit of glue on the side that, it, that is going in the paper bag. So just like that. And it's gonna go in the fold. So open up the bag and stick it in that fold near the top. You can always readjust it. That's kind of the nice thing. All right, let's do the other one. Open up the fold, put it in there. Push down, make sure they're stuck. I like to give it a wiggle test. Wiggle, wiggle, okay. Arms. Again, if you see the crayon, you can put it in the back. Doesn't really bother me um, that you can do that. Stick those in there. And they should go like just right under where the fold meets on the side. Let's do the other arm. Okay. Okay. For the mouth, you're going to take that big leaf shape and you're going to cut a triangle out of the bottom of it. So I'll make this the bottom part. So let's just do a triangle. Cut. Cut. And then see, I made this side really pointed, so I'm gonna round this off a little bit. So, it'll have a little cut out of the bottom, okay? And then put glue on that, and you're gonna stick that on the bottom of the flap. So that's gonna be like the top part of the mouth. And then you're just gonna cut a little like semi-circle out of the extra paper. And you can cut it down too if you need to. So, okay, like that. And put glue all over that because that's gonna be the bottom of the mouth. So that is gonna go inside the fold and just match it up so that way when your mouth opens, it matches up. Okay, so to do the crayon for the mouth, you're just gonna draw a little V for the nose, bring the stick down, and then you're just gonna trace another um, triangle there, top of the triangle, where you cut it. Okay, add pink for the mouth, like where the tongue mouth area is. Add some pink for the ears in the middle. I just drew another little pink leaf inside. And then I colored the ends of the arms like so that their hooves, um, like a sheep would have, like that. And then if you have Google eyes or stickers, you can use them, but I'm just gonna draw my eyes. So you can just draw your eyes on, whatever you wanna do. And then here comes the fun part, the cotton balls. I put a line of glue across the very top and I stick cotton balls on there. And then you're gonna stick them on the belly. So just do a big circle of glue where you want them on the belly. Or you could do the whole body, you could do them on the arms, whatever you wanna do, it's your sheep. I think the sheep is really fun to do because you have all these cotton balls, but you can do elephants, tigers, and wiggle test. I think, I think we got it. All right, let's see. Look, it's a sheep. All right. We'll see you next week and enjoy your puppet. Wow, we've sure had fun together under God's big tent. We learned that God gives us the courage to face hard things. And we learned that God loves creation and all its beautiful diversity. You know, that makes me think of another wonderful song. It's called, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. I think we have a video of our friends Andrew and Cherise to help us learn it. Let's listen. 
Hey everybody, welcome back. I have another awesome song for all of you. This song is called, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. And it's got a few verses, but it all sounds similar, okay? So we're gonna go through the first verse, and then I'll tell you what the next verses are. The first verse goes, He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands, okay? Second verse is he's got the wind and rain in his hands. Okay, the wind and the rain. The third verse, he's got you and me, brother, the first time, and he's got you and me, sister, the second time. And then we flip-flop them, okay? So this, that third verse would go, he's got you and me, brother, in his hands. He's got you and me, sister, in his hands. He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Okay, the fourth verse is, he's got the little bitty baby in his hands. And if you don't do that, you're not doing it right, okay? So he's got the little bitty baby in his hands. Okay, and then the fifth verse, the final verse, is he's got everybody in his hands. Okay, so can we try it all together? You ready? You gotta get up, stand up when you sing this song, okay? I really want you to sing it out loud. guys for some more awesome songs. Ooh. Thanks for joining us under God's Big Tent. See you tomorrow. Wait, so tell me again. I'm a dragon, but I'm also a lion? Ooh. No, I think it's part owl, part sheep. Hmm. Wait, pastors, what was the takeaway again? Jesus, Jesus loves you. you.